Welcome back to the 200 Challenge. Today is episode 88, meaning we have 88 kilos left to the target. Today, we're going to take the four-wheel drive out. And this is one of these things that people are a little bit scared about this. It's a little bit more complicated with the C4 compared to the C2. And we're here to show you that it's really not. So to my help, I have Yoni Erik here, one of my good friends. So with that, here's C4 explosion. Step one, taking drive shafts out. Uh, typical way of, of doing this for me is just having a friend holding the wheel and then you just take one of these by, by itself. You can do this in many different ways. If you're by yourself, uh, an easier way could just be to put the, gear, the, the car in gear or, or pull the handbrake. But the way we're going to do it here is Jan Erik, he just holds the, the wheel and I will untighten these using just an Allen key like this. This is how this looks and this is what we're talking about here. If you can just turn. Turn a little bit, turn a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, that's good. Okay. Next step is the hydraulic actuators that go in and, and engage the, uh, the diff between the two wheels. So it's hydraulic, it sits here, uh, it sits in these two nuts here, as well as this bracket here. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to take it out, I'm just going to loosen it and, and release it a little bit. Uh, and then as the gearbox comes down, then I can gently put it to the, toward the sides. So it's these two here, it's this here, and I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. Uh, next up after this is just the sway bar here. So, let's get it done. With that, we have uh, released the, uh, the cylinder, so I can actually I can actually pull this one out here now, so this one is, is loose. Uh, we've released the bracket here, so this one holds both, both of these two actuators, the one that goes in this direction and the one that goes in this direction. Important to, to not miss here is the earth braid that sits over here. There sits another one here just on the starter that we're going to release up in the chassis instead. Then you have the 12 volt cable connection here to the starter. Something that cannot be forgotten, and that is to release the, the return line up to the, the, the filter. Uh, it's very difficult to do this without pinching your hand, so, so just brace yourself. Next step is the area here around where the gearbox goes to, to the axle or the shaft that goes to the front. Uh, you need to loosen these bolts here from the bottom, as well as from the inside of the car, we'll show you that later as well as the gear shifter here. And then we need to get this actuator out, which sits on a small little bolt here. As we take the gear shifter out, what I typically do is I take the shifter out, I put it in third gear so that the, the shifter goes into the gearbox. And once I've done that, I'll just take it apart. Uh, another important thing here is uh, to, to fabricate just something simple, something simple like this. And then you put it just over here. And what this does is when you lower down the uh, engine and transmission here, the shaft won't fall down. So for the actuating cylinder here, there's a little bolt just here. When you take that out, you should be able to... Ah. Yeah, there you go. This is a little holding bracket. As soon as you have this one out, you get wiggle this cylinder out as, like, as well. And you, you won't be able to take it out, but you can just loosen it. And as soon as this comes down, then you can just take it gently out of the way and, and leave it in the car. Another very important piece, otherwise this doesn't work at all, is to get the little bushing, the little uh, spline bushing between the gearbox and the, the torque tube off. So it sits with an Allen bolt there and an Allen bolt there. So yanking around with the front wheels, manage to, to turn this one a little bit. Uh, and as soon as you've done that, you take this, this bolt out completely. It needs to be taken completely out. Don't do the mistake I did previously with just loosening it. Once you have the two bolts left, you can just use a screwdriver and just pry this spine coupling away. I have a little gap here now, which means the gearbox is disconnected now. The bolts holding the, the, the torque tube to the front, they're up here. Uh, I only know one way of taking these out. It's using one of these ratcheting wrenches. If you don't have a ratcheting wrench here, you're going to be really sorry because this is going to take probably an hour to do this. With one of this, it is 
usually really quick out. This is the gearbox mount here. We're going to start with just loosening this up a little bit. We're not going to take it out, we're just going to loosen it up. Because really the, the next step now is start lowering the engine down. And we're loosening up a little bit here so we have a little bit play. And then we start in the back. I'm going to go over on the other side and, and loosen the engine mounts. So as we now start loosening this, the, the engine and the gearbox will actually come down. Oh, sorry. With a long extender like this and an 18 millimeter socket. A long socket because the, the thread is typically sticking out of the vault, at least on my car. You try to find where it is from below. You need to be careful when you do this, obviously, because you can't loosen it all the way, then the engine will just simply fall down. So typically what I do is I loosen it a little bit and then I feel from the inside if I still can feel thread on the other side or not. Initially we were going to do this without taking the, the exhaust system off. You can do that, that's uh, almost as, as easy. But uh, looking at this we, we kind of thought let's, let's just take the exhaust out. I've already removed all the harnessing. We did that in one of the previous episodes. Otherwise you have things up here that you need to disconnect and you have the two harness connectors here. We have the fuel incoming line on this side that we need to disconnect as well as the return over here and a few other things on the bracket in here. We're gonna get the engine out now. This is how I do it. I have this hydraulic table here that comes up from below and then I have the, uh, the big lift that comes from above. Uh, I have my little jig here. If you look at this jig, it's a little bit slanted, and it's slanted being higher on, on this side on purpose, so that when the engine comes down on, on this bed here, it will have a little bit of an inclination, and that makes it easier to take the, the connection from the gearbox to the, to the torque tube off. So we're going to get this in, and we're going to take it up as much as we can, and then we're going to lower the car down, and unload the engine from the car. Uh, as you're doing this, the drive shaft on the right side, you have to be really careful so you kind of guide this one around the starter, otherwise it, it might get really trapped there. Another thing that we did just in the front uh, as the gearbox mount is loosened, we took the, the actuator for the, the diff going towards the front. We took that out and bent it and put it on the side. That's it. It's uh, not really very complicated doing this. The, the tricky part is, is the front towards the torque tube. Uh, it does help a lot to get the engine a little bit on an inclination so you can kind of ease it out this way. Uh, as you lower it down, you're bound to get it stuck on something, so, so be really careful. We, we already had the throttle wire out and some of the wiring out, so I didn't pay that much attention to that. But, but really, just step by step, careful does it, and uh, anyone can do it. Since this project is about Taking the C4 out, we better get rid of this big chunk here so we can compare this with what it would be if we didn't have a C4. Right, so starter needs to go off first. So with the harness off, we can get the starter off. Here we go. Before they separate, we need to take the clutch, clutch shaft out. It's this little bolt just here. There's a little cover here covering this, this clutch uh, shaft here. Uh, if you take it out and just put a little bolt in there, then you can use that to pull it out. So that's the, the clutch shaft. And with that, the, the clutch fork is loose. Okay, so we try to, to provide a little bit of uh, strain on these here, just to unload it a little bit. And once we have that, we'll just loosen 
the, the last little bolt is his finger tied here. At some point, we should be able to just pull this out. Very yeah, good. So this is the first piece of the C4 out. Uh, there's at least five or six more pieces left, some small, some big. Uh, we're going to put this out down on the floor, put the engine away, and then just rip the other things out of the car. We're going to get the, the, the rear axles out, or rear shafts out. Uh, in one of the previous episodes, we just loosened these a little bit, so this, this should be released to get them out now. But let's hope that's true. Huh. Next step is taking the calipers off, so we can take the discs off. So, releasing the rear calipers doesn't manifest any real difficulties except the bottom bolt. This is how it looks. So you see the, the top bolt really doesn't manifest any difficulties, but the lower one, you need this very long tool and go through the, uh, the lower arm here. Ah, there we go. One caliper out. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to use a claw here and try to get the shaft to, to pop out. A few different ways of doing this, of course. Uh, what I did the last time was just gently use the, the impact wrench. Uh, and there we go. Easy as that. <laughs> so we're soldiering ahead here, trying to get all of the components of this four-wheel drive out of here. Uh, it's not so easy up in the front as I initially thought. This is the diff here, of course. This is the torque tube here, of course. And then you have a cross member here that, that kind of holds the whole thing up. The, the issue here, or I, there's many issues, of course, but one of the issues is that the two bolts that sit on the top that hold the torque tube, there is no way of getting to them. So I think we're left with really no other solution than to take the whole thing down, meaning we're going to let it go here, 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 here. We're going to let the, uh, the suspension, the, the uprights, the connection between the suspension and the uprights, we're going to let that go. Again, first time for everything, uh, we're going to release some of the bolts on the, on the carriage here. And uh, then we're going to put a table here, then we're going to lower the car down then release it completely, lift it onto the table, and then lift the car off. I believe it's all loose now. We've uh, released the, uh, the suspension to the uprights and uh, taken, taken down the ABS uh, sensor cables as well. So let's just put the table here. So Jan Erik just asked me if we thought about everything and I'm sure we haven't. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's try anyway and, and see where we get. It's just a little bit of a sample. Hey, chance you the problem with this is that it feels a little bit too easy, so we wonder what we have done wrong here. So, so as we did this, the, the only real issue we had, apart from finding the, the correct balance with the table, was the, uh, the, the, the steering gear, uh, the, the spline joint there to, to get this one to release completely. That was not very easy. But other than that, I think we have the front part of a C4 on the floor here. Let's, let's jack it up completely and we have a look. So here we go, we got the C4 on the floor now. So with this guy on the floor like this, it's time to just start scavenging this one for parts. Gonna get the, uh, the, the front drive shafts out, of course, and just loosen them up here and do the same procedure as we did on the back. This procedure that Jan Erik is gonna demonstrate here is called pop the drive shaft. Just had a claw on it. And pop it goes. So the front diff sits with the bolt in, in the bottom and, and a little rubber mount. So we've taken that bolt out. I think it's loose now. I'm going to go in there and take the heavy part while Jan Erik, he's going to help me with the other part here. This is 
massive. <laughs> this was a heavy day, I have to say that. So, this is how a C4 looks when you have all of the individual components put together. This brings us to my favorite part of this episode, which is scoring time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to collect all this weight here, and Yonierik here is going to note it down, and then we're going to weigh the corresponding C2 setup, which is over there. Okay, so let's go. First off, we have the little unit that is the actuator unit, which we're going to put here together with the solenoids. 2.6. The two front drive shafts. 12.2. Oh, 46.9. Oh, Jesus. And then we have the mount and the little uh, rubbery thing for the, for the shifter. 1.1. Two pieces of rear shafts. 11.8. We were a little bit unsure about the actual weight of the, the gearbox because it sounded just too much, but it's really 81 and a half kilos. Wow! So as you can see, the, the G50, which is the one you have on the C2, it's shorter, doesn't have this, this differential piece here, which uh, the G65 has, G64. This one has this big chunk here, which is the differential, uh, sending one third of the torque to the front and, and two thirds to the back. It's a really super cool gearbox, but it's not really what you want to have for a track car. But really, I, I do like this gearbox. But this is what the C2 setup looks, and it is ridiculously simple compared to the other setup. This is my G50. I bought this from my good friend Timu from Finland. Thank you very much for the help on that. Uh, Jon Erik was gracious enough to, to lend me a pair of shafts here, and I have my new CAE shifter. This was maybe a little bit of a different way of scoring than, than the last episode, but I hope this works for everyone and you can get a good feeling for what the difference between the two setups are. So, Mr. Judge, what was the total on the C4? 156.4 kilos. 156.4 kilos. kilos for the C4. And the runner-up? 82.6 kilos. So, 82.6 kilos for the C2, and that means that the score, going from a C4, to a C2 is 74 kilos. That's not bad. <laughs> wow, this was this was tough. This was tough, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> this was really tough. I had no idea that the front part of the car was going to be so complicated. I had this dream about just taking it apart, and I told you on the this is maybe going to be one and a half hour to take the engine out, and then maybe one and a half to take the rest out. It did take one and a half hour to take the engine out. It's it's really not that difficult. But taking the rest out, oh, that was, that was tough. We started this episode with 88 kilos left to the target. We found 74, so that is, that is as accurate of a figure as I've ever found on the difference between a C4 and a C2, because we, we really tried to, to take everything in. Meaning that next episode is episode 14, with 14 kilos left to the target. As, as you can see, maybe, my 200 kilo, which I thought was a stretch in the beginning, that isn't really a stretch. You can get 200 kilos out of one of these if it is a C4. I'm still going to keep going. I have at least two, three episodes left before I start rebuilding this to become a race car. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. Your feedback means a lot to me. Thank you very much.